Alabama State are winners of 53 straight games and once again left the crystal ball repeating as national champions after defeating the Ohio State Buckeyes. What a season it was for the Alabama State Hornets. We complete season 10 with the mission to repeat. Steve Rekobosic won Offensive Player of the Game in the SWAC and of course Robert Bates wins SWAC Defensive Player of the Week for his scoop and score versus the Ohio State Buckeyes and we straight dominated them. So look at Joseph Cooley's record so far as head coach of the Hornets. Nine SWAC titles, three national championships, 53 game win streak that is a new NCAA record along with nine winning seasons is taken over as head coach. Just a crazy adventure it has been here with the Alabama State Hornets. And what can I say, man? This team continues to improve. The program continues to improve. We did a great job of improving as far as offense. I thought there would be question marks on defense, but we just kept getting better as the season went along, man. So, so if y'all want to take a look at these stats, just pause the video. Comparing our rankings to the rankings around the conference and around the nation. Now, Alabama State is still looking to win more championships. Joseph Cooley is looking to just straight dominate college football, just set the new records for coaches, whatever. Alabama State is the new standard right now. Everybody wants to be like Alabama State football. What can I say, man? Joseph Cooley told those kids, we're not trying to be mediocre. We're not trying to be average. We want to win championships. So let's go into the Season 10 review. What can we say? about the season 10 Alabama State Hornets that we haven't said about the season 9 Alabama State Hornets. Well, they set the record for the longest win streak in college football history with 53. We're going to have some players on this team that will be playing on Sundays. Our Belitnikov forward winner will be the next guy. Will this man right here on your screen, Steve Rekobostik, will he pop up on Madden? We had a lot of seniors on this team, though. There's a lot of players that need to be replaced. We have, a, especially on the offensive side of the ball, we got a lot of players that need to be replaced. And it looks like we might be losing a lot of people in our starting secondary. But we won't know until the offseason starts. A linebacking core that's just going to get better. Kevin Jackson blaming on the boogie. He was excellent. But we got more horses in the stable at the linebacker spot. But the season 10 Alabama State Hornets, they are picking up with the season 9 Alabama State Hornets left off. This was pretty much the same team for the most part, with a few differences. But come season 11, we're going to have a lot of changes. So the first game of the season, we went to unfamiliar territory in the Midwest. We went up to West Lafayette, Indiana, and we had to take on the Purdue Boilermakers in their territory. In this game was an emerging star. Patrick Carrier, the red shirt sophomore out of Kingsville, Texas, came into the opening game of the season and had a field day against the Purdue Boilermakers. On the season, 41 receptions over 1,300 yards receiving along with 13 touchdown receptions. This game was back and forth. At one point, we was down by two possessions. But if you watch this dynasty, you would know that this Alabama State program does not give up whatsoever. This interception by Kevin Jackson was one of the biggest plays of the game. Eventually, we would take the lead and Steve Rekobosic with this run will seal the deal on the opening game of the season. On the season, he had 1,400 yards rushing along with 18 touchdown runs on 168 carries. He averaged just over eight yards a carry all season. Steve Rekobosic, the Mississippi Dash, you will be missed. Good luck to you at the next level. An amazing game that was, we beat Purdue by 10 points. And then we had the Cal Bears come to the Gump Town for our home opener. This was the first time we had a Pac-12 team come over to the Southeast and host them. Ruben Stutter Smith, the freshman out of Yonkers, New York, had one of his two touchdowns in his game. Along with just over 200 yards receiving and 14 receptions. This game was also back and forth. But we had a huge play before halftime that pretty much changed the difference in this game. Aaron Landrum at the end of the half, or the first half that is, ran this thing back for a pick six, and he had an excellent season. And how can we forget this big run by Brooke Thompson? That pretty much sealed the deal. We never looked back after that run. We beat Cal 45-38, to and then we go right into SWAT play the following week. 
So we pop up in Loma, Mississippi. We're taking on the Alcorn State Breeze. Kevin Garnett Humphrey won his best games of the season right here. He caught two touchdown passes in this game. Had seven touchdown passes on the season. Just over 800 yards receiving on 28 receptions. He did drop a lot of passes. Hopefully he won't do that come season 11. The true freshman Stone Cold Steve Austin Mason got his first touchdown run of his collegiate career. What a time that was for him. What a moment that was. Ryan Anderson had a big year. Five INTs, two pick sixes. One punt return for a touchdown, which he did right here. 26 tackles and one for loss, along with 11 pass deflections. How can we forget about Charles Alexander the Greek? This man was named as a first team All-American. 31 tackles, 8 for loss, 5 sacks, 3 INTs, 6 pass deflections, and 2 of those INTs went for a pick 6. We took care of Alcorn State, and now we're back at home. We're taking on the Florida a and Rattlers, and the Alabama State whole check defense finally rose to the occasion for the second straight week. Nate Reed, one of the Reed brothers, took this pick 6 all the way back. And we destroyed the Rattlers, folks. Remember, the Rattlers was driving very, very good on this drive until this interception, and we just killed all their hopes. How can we forget about this pick six by Ryan Anderson, though? FAMU forced a turnover on defense, and then that drop pass let the Ryan Anderson get in that pick six. Kevin Jackson blaming on the boogie. His magnificent season. The Chuck Batnerick Award winner for the nation's best defensive player. Jackson was on a straight clinic all season on defense at linebacker. Justin, Frankie, Beverly, and Mays had just under 1,000 yards rushing, 13 rushing touchdowns on 105 carries. He averaged over 9 yards per carry. What a season he had. We destroyed FAMU. We got them out of here. And then we're back on the road this time around Bethune-Cutman with Daytona Beach. And we're taking on the Bethune-Cutman Wildcats. Now, for the most part, this wasn't one of our best games, but our defense stepped up. Rashawn Pearson on that set. And then look at that coverage by Aaron Landrum as he gets that interception on the cover three. Excellent job by Aaron Landrum. Again, this wasn't one of our best performances. But in the end, we did get a convincing victory. We beat them 45-14. to 14. We're back at the crib once again, but this time, we're taking on the Texas Southern Tigers. And I think our best game of the season. We goose egg the Texas Southern Tigers, but Sheldon Money Green was on a whole nother level. This man had a total of four touchdowns in his game. Two went for punt returns, and then he had two receiving touchdowns. He had 20 receiving touchdowns on the season. And then you add on top of that two more rushing touchdowns, along with 1,575 yards receiving. Sheldon Money Green was no doubt the Belitna Cup Award winner, no doubt the best wide receiver in college football this season. Buster Rhymes Brown, Young Stud, pause, and looking to make a name for himself in the future. 32 tackles in the season, 16 for loss along with four sacks. And then how can we forget Dan Finnerty, one of his best games of the season. Had over 3,100 yards passing, 32 touchdown passes completed. 55% of his passes. That wasn't all his fault. No doubt these receivers dropped too many passes, but that quarterback rating looks really good. We beat them 80 to nothing. And then we're back in the crib once again to take on the surprising winless Southern Jaguars. A team that's gritty, but they just can't pull off any type of win. Brooke Thompson with a big run right here. We were struggling with this team to start off the game. But then Dan Finnerty finally got things going. Look at that perfect pinpoint pass up the middle to Patrick Collier. And look at that speed. Patrick Collier has world-class speed. There is no question about that, man. He should be trying out for the Olympics, man. No doubt about that. Sheldon Money Green had a big day. Great job by him. The Belitna Call for World winner. Look at this catch right here in the end zone. That pretty much sealed the deal for us. We beat them 45 to 33. Then we go up I-65. I-65 North to be more precise. We're in Huntsville taking on the Alabama AM and Bulldogs in the Magic City Classic. Look at Steve Urkobosik. He had three touchdown runs in this game. Rashawn Pearson had one of his eight sacks in this game. 13 tackles, nine for loss. Great job by Rashawn Pearson. I believe we have him for one more year. Justin Frankie Beverly Mays also had three touchdown runs in his game. Our offense was absolutely on it. We dominated the second quarter. 
to pretty much end the game. The beginning of the Magic City Massacre started with this pick six by Ryan Anderson, and we did not look back after that. And Dan Finity was throwing everything on an absolute dot. Look at this run right here, though, by Justin, Frankie, Beverly, and me. Squeaking through those gaps, getting into the end zone. It was an all-out hornet fest. We straight beat up on the Bulldogs, put them in a spliff, 79 to 28. And we're back at the crib to take on the Jackson State Tigers. And a game where we found another up-and-coming star. As far as the backup quarterback positions, Dan Finity went down on this sack right here. He was out for the rest of this game. And then came Gerard Green, the junior college transfer. Man went on an absolute clinic. He passed for over 600 yards versus Jackson State, along with six touchdown passes. Both of those are school records in a single game. And then how can we fit? Look at this run by here by Sheldon Money Green. Look at him just blicking. Gerard Green. Many are arguing that Gerard Green's arm is better than Dan Fittity's arm and that Gerard Green should be started. But in limited action, Gerard Green passed for over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdown passes, 75% of his passes were completed, man. Absolutely crazy numbers in such a limited amount of time. He was absolutely excellent in this game. Not one flaw. He only missed on five targets on top of that. We took care of Jackson State. We beat them 63-7. to And then we got the conference finale versus the Grambling State Tigers in the whole Ellie Robinson Stadium. This was one of our worst offensive performances of the season, but Bobby Swagger showing that swag, a senior. Two sacks on the season, six tackles, three for loss. He will be missed because he did a good job closing up the gaps, especially on the run. Steve Rickobostic with this amazing run. He had so many amazing runs. As a starter for Alabama State, we need to go back and make a montage of those runs. The Alabama State whole check defense, though, was the story of the game as Ryan Anderson picked off one of his five picks of the season. In this game, we got, I believe it was, what, four turnovers total in this game. We took care of Grambling. We beat them 31-8, to and then we had the game of the century. Number one versus number two. We went up I-85 North to take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in Atlanta and Brooke Thompson with the biggest run of his collegiate career. This will be remembered forever. This 76-yard run up the left sideline, one of his four touchdown runs on the season. And then, of course, Aaron Landrum picking this pass off to end the hopes for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and their national championship hopes. That was so big for us, man, because we could not get a stop on Georgia Tech for most of the game. We beat them 38 to 35, and we're off to Detroit. Pretty much at this point, we win the SWAT championship, and we are going to the national championship game, but we have to take on a gritty Alcorn State team that was not looking to hold back and was not trying to make it easy for us. We struggled, especially on offense. Wide receivers kept dropping passes. But in the end, it was all about the run game. Brooke Thompson, Steve Rokobostik, and Justin Frankie Beverly and Mays did what they had to do on the ground to get us to the promised land. And how can we forget the defense that did a good job? Because remember, at one point, Alcorn State did have the lead. Booker T. Reed with 41 tackles, one sack, and of course, one of his two interceptions. This one right here was crazy, and it was huge. We needed that one badly. We took care of Alcorn State, one of our ninth straight SWAT championship, and we absolutely balled out in the national championship game versus the Ohio State Buckeyes. This was a team that had one loss. We wanted to make sure we keep our one streak going. DJ Walker and Ron Bates made the play of the game. Walker forcing his fumble. Bates scooping it up and taking it into the end zone. That pretty much gave us a good cushion putting us up by three possessions before the half was over. What a play that was. And again, this is another memorable play in the history of this dynasty. Steve Rickobostic with his last touchdown run, and of course, Brooke Thompson with his last touchdown run in his collegiate career. So that's a wrap for season 10. We took care of Ohio State. We beat them. We put them in a spliff. And now we get ready for season 11. What's in store for the Alabama State Hornet football team as they continue to grow. Join us next time. We're going to have the offseason video. Peace.